The year was 1998. Everybody was scrambling for an answer to why heart disease spiked and other diseases. One researcher came up with the idea that salt was bad for you. Well, salt didn't have a big industry. Unlike another industry that looks exactly like salt. And so everybody jumped on the bandwagon of saying salt was bad for you. He linked salt to high blood pressure. High blood pressure was linked to heart disease. So heart disease was indirectly linked to the consumption of salt. Nothing could be further from the truth. It goes exactly like this. Air, water, and then for third place, it's a tie between salt and food. Salt is just that important. What does salt do in the body? Salt is an electrolyte that makes all of your synapses, synapses connect to each other. Your brain functions. Your nervous system functions. For that matter, your circulatory system functions. For that matter, your digestive system functions. Your pituitary system functions. Your genes function. All of that is connected to salt. So to say that food is more important than salt, it's a toss up. Salt is as essential to your body as air and water is. Some biologists put salt at a distant from food, food being very low on the totem pole. Because you can go 30 days without food, you can't go 30 days without salt. Immediately the body starts breaking down, so by day 20 or so, then you don't, you stop having brain function. So before you get to the lack of food, which is compensated by you feeding off of your fat and your muscle, salt comes into play. Now, why am I making this video? A study was just released. And the conclusion of the study, and this was an actual study, that salt is not only essential, but salt is good for you. And, and they broke the connection between salt and high blood pressure, salt and heart disease. This is earth shattering because you do not know how many billions of dollars are made off of the lie that salt is bad. Also, the billions of dollars of feeding you bad salt, which is what the original study was based on. Same thing with fat. We'll, we'll get to fat later. So, bad salt is being fed to you in the form of fast food restaurants, regular restaurants, regular chefs, it's only the health people that finally have figured out and actually took a look at salt. Wait a minute. No, we're talking about processed salt by the, by the salt industry. It's only until you get to natural salts, sea salts, Himalayan sea salt, that you start getting into the actual things that the body actually needs. This processed salt is not 
what your body needs. The stuff that sits on your table, that's not what your body needs. If you're if you're one of the f people that has salt in a salt shaker that you buy for a dollar at the store. Table salt, which is used in cooking too, is terrible for you. Why? Because natural salt, like everything else, natural salt has 50,000 things that are in it. Minerals and, and, and other electrolytes and other salts, all compacted into the name natural salt or Himalayan salt or sea salt, right? The salt in your table is stuff that's made in a laboratory and pumped out by the millions of tons each minute or hour or whatever. And they can sell it for a dollar for a big carton or whatever you call the thing. That is not salt. That is what's bad for you. Natural salt. We have to go back to natural stuff. Eating naturally. And I'm not one of these people talking about you need to be a vegan or vegetarian because that is ludicrous too. And they finally came out and said that too. Uh, that leads to wasting disease and once you get wasting disease there is no turning back so you can't start eating meat to reverse that situation leading up to it you can reverse it but once you have it you're done your history and it's fatal salt natural salt natural eating I'm talking about the stuff that your great grandparents ate if they were of a middle-class home I'm not talking about poor people and I'm not talking about the super rich sometimes the super rich do not eat as as wholesomely as you would think I'm talking about cooking from scratch stuff that you made and stuff when we had housewives and housewives were praised oh <laughs> I'm not making this political but housewives were esteemed a long time ago and the maid servant was esteemed a long time ago. So eating naturally, eating natural stuff made from scratch, not processed, that is good for you. That's the fats, that's the salts, that's your meats, that's your that's everything. That's your eggs, naturally raised, raised naturally. And what's ironic is in their zeal to make cows and pigs fatter and what have you, or chickens fatter, uh, they have not come to, th they are now a dinosaur industry, the way they do it, because now they're coming out with better technology and better uh, uh, farming uh, practices that actually renders the naturally raised chicken, the naturally raised cows, the naturally raised pigs, fatter and of course healthier. And yes, of course more expensive, but what, where would you rather pay? By the plate or by the hospital? <laughs> there you go. Now, one thing I left out that I did not intend to leave out. The study that they did was done on prisoners. Don't, don't, don't get your don't get into a don't get triggered why prisoners oh, prisoners volunteered by the way they didn't force them to do it uh, they said uh, can't do it on the military military's uh, overall uh, a young crowd and a young crowd would not develop anything uh, anytime soon because you can f you can feed a young person complete trash for 30 years before you see anything and this is is how the the food industry has literally bamboozled everyone because they keep feeding the stuff to young people and the human body has three separate things of how to deal with trash in the body so you can keep feeding young people trash and you will not see anything in fact it takes quite some time for obesity to even show up and obesity we know is a disease once you're into the category of obese it's a disease getting there is not a disease 
uh, it is a preventable disease, and this is what everybody keeps keeps telling the people who are obese. And 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 since ninety percent of my channel is men, obesity, that whole fat shaming stuff, doesn't apply to men. So we're all good, right? Now, uh, when you do stuff to young people, uh, nothing will show up for decades because the body keeps replenishing. The body is still in the whole replenishment growth mature maturing phase you don't your brain doesn't even mature until the age of 25. can't do it to seniors because seniors are all on all sorts of uh a strict diets and some of the diets include salt as an intake already into their diet can't do it on the elderly in in homes so they just they decided to try prisoners because prisoners not too young not too old, not on a strict diet, and they can control what the prisoners eat simply because the prisoners are beholden to it. Now, all of the prisoners who are involved in the study volunteered. Nobody was forced to do it, okay? And all they did was feed them. Now, as a side note, when they were trying to do a study on diets, and they fed one group the American diet, uh, that's your bacon and eggs and blah, blah, and your... And your uh, uh, meat and potatoes and the hamburgers and french fries and all that sort of stuff everything that a typical american would eat which of course leads to obesity right another group was on the mediterranean diet and another group was on a vegan diet study right the vegan people uh they they took off because they started developing the typical american diseases actually earlier than the people on the uh, strictly american diet so they took they eliminated that group because that group did not fulfill uh whatever they were looking for because the diseases popped up diseases popped up okay we are, we had the researchers done on vegans so then it was down to the mediterranean diet and the um, typical american diet well it took a long time for the American diet to start showing signs of whatever. And for those who uh, think I'm lying about vegan and, and uh, vegans have not shown, vegans or vegetarians have not shown any reduced levels of any sort of heart disease, high blood pressure, the C word, nothing. They have not shown any sort of reduction. And in fact, a study showed that they uh, actually attain all of those diseases before the people on typical american diets or even uh, meatopians what is it meat meat uh what's the pizza advertisement called the meat meat lover the meat meatitarian the meatitarians even the meatitarians don't develop anything close uh, as quickly as the uh, vegan vegetarians and that is a study and you can go look it up. I never speak or talk about anything off the top of my head unless I've actually studied it and I don't make up stuff. Why? Because I'm not that imaginative. So now the, uh, uh, the, uh, the study with the uh, American diet and the Mediterranean diet went on for decades. They had already eliminated the vegans, but the, the study went on for decades. So the, people on the American diet started dropping. You know what I mean? And so that number started increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing to the point where uh, uh, a huge percentage was gone. So the people doing the study were so uh, not ashamed, embarrassed. They were so sad for the people on the American diet that they switched them to the Mediterranean diet and declared that the Mediterranean diet was the be-all, end-all of diets. They had not developed any any diseases. They had not developed obesity. They have not developed any cardiovascular uh, problems. Nothing of the sort. None of it. So they were eating fat. They were eating lots of fish. They were eating lots of fresh vegetables. Actually, if you go to country American diet, that's almost what the country American diet is, except for the fish part, unless you go to uh, New England East Coast. Then you'll get almost Mediterranean-ish 
type of diet where they eat a lot of fish, a lot of mussels, and stuff like that. Uh, well, of course, uh, then you have the uh, paleo diet, and then you have these uh, these other diets that popped up and said, "Well, here's a little tweaking, and this is uh, more in keeping because we studied." A historical man and we looked at all of their diets and except for the Scandinavian countries uh, for the most part the people who lived the longest were on these other diets and that's the paleo the ketogenic blah 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 and that's you have it that was a, a side note from the salt thing but salt has been declared completely safe and essential and you need to then purchase uh, natural salt some sort of natural stuff not kosher salt not kosher salt. Let me repeat, not kosher salt. That is processed just like table salt. It is nothing better at all. And do not let anybody fool you. In fact, I speak out against kosher salt. There's no reason for an American to purchase kosher salt unless they are Jewish. And even for your Jewish for you Jewish people who listen to me, eat natural salt. If you absolutely need a rabbit of blessed, go buy your a ton of natural salt, your sea salt, your Himalayan sea salt. Take the entire ton and have your rabbi bless it kosher. There you go. That's what you do, not the stuff that's processed. Uh, and I'm not trying to insult you. I'm trying to, tell, trying to keep you alive. There you go. Uh, so now... Where does that leave high blood pressure and heart disease? You remember I said the industry that looks exactly like salt, but isn't salt? Of course, we're talking about sugar. They did not want to make sugar the enemy. Why? Because the sugar industry is the richest industry outside of oil in the United States. Low fat, high sugar. Low sodium, high sugar. See a connection there? Now, sugar increased astronomically in the American diet prior to 19, uh, right before 1960, I want to say, when they tried to get corn to be the be all end all. Then they discovered high fructose corn syrup, which they created in laboratory. And on the, for its uh, and uh, Monsanto then changed corn to be not corn. And then the high fructose corn syrup industry, or processors, created a corn that's not corn. So between Monsanto and the high fructose corn syrup or processors, the corn that is used for high fructose corn syrup, uh, people have tasted. And it literally, for to them, tastes like cardboard, tastes something gross. Even if they put salt and butter on it, it's gross. It is not for human consumption. Now, when something tastes bad, you, you understand that it's not for human consumption, right? So, I'm going to tell you that it was sugar. It was sugar all along. Sugar is has perv... Uh, infused itself into everything. You can't buy m processed meat without sugar. So we're talking about your salamis, your bologna, and all that sort of stuff. All has sugar infused on them. And uh, remember I said I'm going to make that Subway sandwich? Well, my Subway sandwich that I've been practicing on to perfect uh, doesn't taste anything like the Subway sandwich. Now, I kept thinking... Why does this sandwich taste so good? And then I started eating the individual pieces of the sandwich. Cucumbers taste good. Cucumbers don't really actually taste that great. In fact, they don't have a taste to them. Uh, the uh, spinach tastes good. And then I researched and figured out that it's all sprayed with sugar. Same thing with McDonald's. They spray their stuff with sugar. So that you have a sugar salad. A sugar sandwich. Sugar meat. Sugar milk, sugar almond milk. Uh, I got a taste of unsweetened almond milk and it tasted absolutely nothing like the almond milk that I had tasted by, what is it, silk or something like that? 
And then you look at it and it says uh, 50 grams of carbohydrates per serving. That's, you're not going to get healthy with that. Anyway, sugar was finally linked to heart disease. And there you have it. And, and sugar's linked to the C word too. That disease. Thank you all for watching and please a like.